So this will be our end goal for this video. Okay, first off, we can just drag and select all of these and delete them. X, delete. Great. So we start up by pressing Shift A to add a mesh and a cylinder. Great. And let's rotate it around Y, 90 degrees, like that. Press Tab to enter Edit Mode and press Alt, left click. And we can drag E, X, drag it like that. And then G, set down and then e x so this will be our crank we're just doing a quick crank rod and piston so we can also press alt left click control b and just add some design and just alt left click control b like that and exit edit mode and right click and shade out the smooth great I think also we can add a name to this one. Let's call it Cranks. And we can add some material. Some quick metallic looking stuff. And we can go over to the, another shading type. Right. And we can right click, Alt, left click. And then Shift, Alt, left click. I want to move the pivot point here. So let's press Shift S. Cursor to selected. And uh, this is because when we create new objects, they will start out from this point. Great. So let's exit edit mode by pressing tab, then press shift A, mesh, and add another cylinder. Let's rotate it. So R, Y, and 90 degrees. Enter. Let's scale it in X. And then scale it upwards in all direction like that. And this will become our rod piston rod so let's just add the material and then we can also just change the name of this object up here so we call it rod great then enter edit mode and i want to uh, select faces so let's press number three and i want to go from that face press down control and select the last face and then select all in between and let's go with e and set and extrude them in uh, this direction and I want to scale it in Y so S and Y scale it like that and then just to add some design we can select this face and all the faces over here by pressing holding down control and pressing left click then we can press I to inset so scale it down and then E to extrude in X and let's uh, exit edit mode by pressing tab and then right click shading out the smooth. And right now I just realized that we have the wrong scale. If we press N and go to item, we can see that the scale is off. So let's press control A and apply rotation and scale. And let's do this for the crank also. So control A, rotation and scale. Great. And now for the last part the piston we still have the 3d cursor down here so let's press shift a mesh and go to the cylinder and scale it up and scale it down in z and drag it up g z up here scale it down a little bit something like that and let's just we can actually apply the scale and rotation right now so control a rotation and scale and then press tab to enter edit mode and I press number one to edit the vertices again let's start out up here alt left click control b to add a little bevel and I only want to add I, let's use the scroll wheel to change the number of bevels like that and then I think we can go back to faces select the button face x delete that face one again work with the vertices alt left click then E, S, then E, Z, and F maybe, yeah. And then I just want to look at here. So let's press Control R, drag it up, Control B, and then E, S. And then just add some material. Great. And then right click, shade out the smooth. Okay, so this will be our parts for the movement. 
So let's set this up. So let's start out by selecting the rod and go to constraints. And we want to add a child of, so we wanted this to be a child of the crank like that. And if you just try to rotate the crank, yeah, it follows, but it will help us instead of moving this by hand every time, if you just animate it. And we can do this real quick. So you just set the end to 50. And uh, we can go up here and hover and press I to set down keyframe. And then we can go to frame 50. And set the X rotation to 360. And press I and we have another keyframe. So if you now press space, it will rotate. Great. So now we need to connect the other parts and we want this to follow the uh, piston. So we need another constraint so we can add a damped track and let's point this rod to the piston. And we need to track the axis in Z. So yeah, something like this. But now we also, we can go back to one and now we need to activate the movement for the piston. And the way I want to solve this is that when this is at its lowest, this is at its lowest. And when it goes up at its highest, this will be at its highest. So if select the piston, and we still in the constraints, we add a limit distance. And we want this distance to uh, be aware of this movement. But when you do this, and try to play it, nothing happened because this, this will try to follow the pivot point of the crank and it's just standing still. We need to follow this point. And a way to solve this is to add an empty down here. So if we press Shift A and let's add an empty plane axis. Let's just scale it up a little bit so we can see it. And we select the piston again. And then instead of the crank, we can take it away. We can select empty. And if you now try, nothing's happening because this is not connected to this one. So let's go back to one and select the empty and then select the crank and then press control P to set the parent to the object. And if you try this now, this will move, but something is wrong. So if you select the piston, we can see the problem is that this is clamp re region inside. It needs to be on the surface. And now it moves as it should. But if, if we change the view to X, we can see that it's one sassy piston. We don't want that. We need to fix this. And the way we want to do this is to add another constraint. And let's choose the limit location and we don't want it to move in Y. So let's just check Y. And you can see no more movement in the Y axis. Uh, great. And this is the movement, but we can actually make it even better uh, because right now it's the X rating and X rating. We don't want that. So let's select the crank, select the two points, right click, and choose interpolation mode, linear. And now it will be a flowing motion. But if we set the um, frames to 200 instead, it will just stop when it's, when it's done with the fifth and we want this to be looping. So one way to solve this is to hover down here and press shift E and choose make cyclic. You select it, press enter and then press can start from the beginning and then you just press space and it will continue to loop. Great. And another great thing with this is that we can move this key point and if it move this further down, maybe to 20, it will go faster. If you move it to 10, even faster. So this, this is really nice. So thanks for watching and if you like stuff like this, please like and subscribe. Bye.